Hey everyone. So a couple of days ago, Phase One launched um, the IQ3 100 megapixel back on the XF platform, and thanks to Doug Peterson and the team at Digital Transitions, they were able to get me some files to play with. But not just me, you as well. Um, if you're hearing this or watching this, um, go to digitaltransitions.com and on their blog section, you'll be able to find some files for you to play with. So um, I wanted to give you guys a sense of pretty much how big 100 megapixels really is and just talk about a few questions you had and make this really informal and pretty exciting um, since I'm sure a lot of people want to get their hands on it. The biggest thing for me is how big is 100 megapixels because numbers sound really extravagant sometimes even though the real world difference isn't as huge. But I think with this case, um, people always think, oh, if it's 50 megapixels, 100 megapixels um, should you know, be twice as big or th whatever it is. And, but there's no frame of, frame of reference essentially. So I think you know, everyone who typically will watch this video has an idea of how big their images are and how far they can zoom in and zoom out. So I'm basically going to go ahead and look at this image right here and just start zooming in and showing you how big the actual file is in terms of um, resolution. So for example, when we're looking at this image, um, we are at 17% of our viewing. And if we start going in closer, you'll start seeing exactly how big and detailed this image is. So we are at finally at 100% and everything looks pretty sharp and clear and it's pretty amazing to see how big this image really is it almost feels like you've taken a file um, a couple of files and stitched them together which is pretty outstanding clearly you can even read the uh, lettering on a lot of these signs which is a good sign for sharpness especially on some of the edges you get an idea of how sharp it is on the sides without any um, issues with color peeking in on the edges which is pretty nice I'm just staying quiet because I'm kind of in awe looking at uh, some of this detail. And the other thing with this new IQ3 back, it has 15 stops of dynamic range and 16 bit color. And it's also on a CMOS sensor, so you can get away with shooting higher ISO um, unlike the previous CCD backs, which is pretty nice. Um, the 100 megapixels itself is quite big so if you're shooting something like beauty um, here's an example of a portrait taken by Doug and he let's see let's actually take a look at this one now these were just you know portraits taken in studio as a quick test to have some files for people to play with really um, so keep that in mind as you look at these now the thing that I really like about this is the fact that the sharpness is extremely apparent and you can see over here we're at 100 percent and everything is highlighted quite beautifully and the separation even between each eyelash clearly from the color and tones that are visible is quite nice but to me I think the biggest thing the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to is the fact that if you um, are shooting landscapes and you need to recover a lot of information from highlights and shadows having that dynamic range is quite impressive so for example in this portrait here we have um, an area which is quite blown out on the hair and the sides and if you wanted to bring that back let's just see how much detail this image has under the surface because if if you know um, how it works essentially it's kind of like an iceberg where 
on the top, just looking at an image, you see areas that are blown out or clipped, and there's detail that's not as visible. But because of the range, you're able to bring a lot of it back. So if we push down the exposure, just to see what kind of range we have, you start seeing a lot of the uh, detail come through, especially noticing that there's still obvious separation between each of these hairs. Now, obviously, it's out of focus, but you know, you get an idea. Like, if we go back into the shadows here, or the highlights, you'll still see the pore separation within the area that seemingly was blown out. So that, to me, is really nice. Okay, great. So let's talk about file sizes. Now, um, by default, we have EIP files, so they're packaged with all these with settings if they have any. Um, this one here is 122 megabytes, and this one's 113. So, you know, the ones that I have with these EIP files are between 110 to 130, starting out with. If we export a say a 16-bit uh, PSD, what we get is a file size that's roughly 578 megabytes here. So you're edging at 600 megabytes to start off with. Now let's bring it into Photoshop. So what that means for me really is the fact that if you are going to be using a camera like this, your system has to be um, up to date. But if you are already comfortable and familiar with using um, phase one files, then the difference in performance is not that much bigger. So if you you know don't have a problem using or, or retouching images on a 60 megapixel back, you should be fine on 100 megapixel back. But if you start seeing slowdown um, when you're working in Photoshop, then chances are you're going to want to start up needing to upgrade. Um, I got a question. He said, uh, uh, from Patrick Vincenzo Redclitch, if I said that correctly, he said, what are, what are your specs on your computer? What are you using? What is your performance like? So for me, I have a, a custom-built PC, and I have, let's see, one terabyte SSD as my main drive, my boot disk, um, and also that's pretty much where I work with my um, current files and store them elsewhere. I have 32 gigabytes of memory and an i7 hex core. I have two NVIDIA GTX 980s in SLI mode. But I think for me, even running on a MacBook Pro example um, is quite feasible because the SSD seems to be the thing that has increased my performance quite a bit, even over having um, more processing power. So if you don't have a system that's on SSD yet, I would recommend doing that for your boot, boot disk as well as your scratch disk. So that way you have the most performance possible. And then followed by your graphics card and then RAM. I think seems to be something that I preferred. I know everyone has their own preference, but um, that seems to be the biggest difference. But you know what? I think um, if you are running at 16 gigabytes of RAM, you probably need you probably need to upgrade. So it's all relative, um, but for me, I think the performance on these files didn't need a, any other uh, performance increase. So even for me, if I am working on this image, um, I don't really see a lot of lag happening when I'm working. The only lag that's happening is because I'm recording the video, so that tends to happen a little bit. But while I was working on these images, it wasn't a huge difference for me. Also keep in mind that uh, CC 2015 with the healing brush and clone brush are live, so they don't have any render times. I've actually used, I'm actually using CC 2014 right now because of the algorithm. Um, seems to be far superior for the healing brush and clone brush. So, aside from that, um, you know, I think Photoshop should be able to keep up. For me, I think the biggest performance difference is whenever you um, jump to video. I think that's a bigger topic issue but for performance I think you know you should be okay if you can handle everything now when you start saving layers in files so if I started saving you know three of these if I duplicated this three times and saved it you'd get over you know a gig 1.8 or something like that and 
when you start having a bigger and bigger image, um, what happens is you're going to need to start saving in PSB instead of PSD because if you hit 2 gigabytes, I believe it is, 2 gigabytes, I haven't, done, I haven't thought about this in a long time, but if you hit 2 gigabytes, um, it won't save as a PSD, so you're going to need to have PSB and that's under the save as functionality right here, large document format. It used to be called Photoshop Big, essentially, is what, what it stands for. And what that means is you could save um, PSD files over two gigabytes, okay? So th I think that workflow option will change for me. Instead of having PSD files, I'll just have everything as PSB uh, coming to the future. Um, talking about, let's see, what else did people have a question about? Ah, Christian Dale had a question about comparing cameras because everything is getting higher megapixel count and you know all of that what is the biggest difference i think for me the biggest difference comes from two things the dynamic range being able to rescue details is quite superior having you know 15 stops for dynamic range is pretty impressive i haven't been, been able to actually experiment completely because i haven't had that many examples just yet but let's say we go back to um our landscape image or this image of copenhagen which is a beautiful city, by the way, if you haven't been. Um, you know, it has a full has full leverage. I mean, this doesn't have anything blown out or clipped or, you know, lost in the shadows or anything, so you can't really compare it. But it's pretty fascinating to see how much you can um, bring back when you start playing with different values. And, and I'm curious to see how this is going to stack up when you work with landscape images. So it might... It might be cool because you won't even need to bracket anymore because it is a CMOS sensor. You can push ISOs high enough. Uh, maybe one frame is enough to bring back shadows without having a lot more grain. And I think that sets a precedence for workflow and being able to justify um, shooting less, essentially, and relying on one single frame for a lot of things. So that's pretty cool. Um, it has a lot of options like that. But, and the other thing for me is having a 16-bit color because, you know, the thing is with medium format, you see a lot more tonality variations within the skin. So if a skin has, you know, different, multiple shades of color, but on, on the SLR side, you don't really see it as much. And this adds to the realism whenever you see a lot more color tone happening in the skin. The only downside that I think happens when you're working on a medium format file like this is that you have to have a better knowledge of retouching if you're coming from something that doesn't render detail this sharp. But if you're coming from like the Nikon side or the D800 side, you're used to larger resolution files, sharper lenses, so it, the jump isn't as much um, going back. So, you know, it's one of those things you have to compare and contrast, but I think for me, if you can afford it and you know your client's paying for it, why not? And if you have the budget for it, obviously. So that's one of them. Um, and Michael of Workshop Photography asked the same thing about how big um, are these files. And you know we answered that question already. So it's something to consider, especially if you guys are shooting a lot and you have an issue with storage. Um, or even if your shooting style is quite fast, then, you know, medium format system is a little bit different in terms of how fast you can shoot. So that may take some time to consider your pros and cons of how much storage you need to think about and also the retouching time. Because if you're retouching on your own and you have deadlines, um, it's a little bit different. But the good thing is, honestly, if you're shooting um, medium format, you get a lot more texture and the quality is just so much nicer. I know I sound like a little fanboy here, but um, I, I can't help it. I'm a retoucher. I geek over this stuff. Geek o I geek over color and seeing a lot of clarity. But, you know, it's all relative. If you need it, then it's great. If you don't, then it's, you know, it's, it's, really, it's really up to you, essentially. I think that's about it. Let me double check if I see any other questions. So, Umano Teodori asked me, how does it compare to the old CCD backs? Now, the CCD backs um, were interesting because, you know, previously they had a lot more fidelity with color and, 
um, CMOS did it at the time, but CMOS could shoot higher ISO, so you could take it outside. And I think, honestly, this seems a little bit more comparable to how the CCDs were. I haven't had a lot of chance to compare them, but take a look on um, the Digital Transitions site to download some of these files to play and push the colors around because I think that's where the biggest difference comes from is not only the color fidelity, but the fact that you can push and pull colors to an extent that keeps a lot of realism intact. Um, but now that it does seem to, I guess, fix all the issues that CMOS had with medium formats in terms of color, it's more comparable than it ever used to be. So play with it, check it out. Well, anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you had fun looking at this file. Um, and hopefully you guys get a chance to check it out yourself. If you have any questions, let me know. Put in the comment section below or contact Digital Transitions. They'll be happy to be of assistance because they have more knowledge on how these cameras work um, on the physical side. Well, thank you so much. Have a great day.